Hello everybody, it is currently 10.08 in my vehicle, and today it is time to talk about more JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, Steel Ball Run. Steel Ball Run, the and, best part. And yeah, um, today we are doing part three of this series, right? At this point, it's going to be, what, a 12-part series? Not to be confused with the parts of JoJo itself. Yes, this we are- This is video number three. This is video number three, part three of our series <laughs> covering Steel Ball Run. Yeah. Um, what are we talking about today? Volumes um, 5 and 6, which go from chapters 24 to 30. So we only have 7 chapters. But, oh man, these are massive 7 chapters. Like, 70-page chapters. Oh yeah, these chapters like, are Like, it's insane. Ridiculous, yeah. Like, I, I don't even understand how he draws all this in one month. Yeah, especially with how detailed the artwork is, because that takes a lot of time. Like, personally, I still think that One Piece has more detail in some of the panels. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've ever really looked into One Piece oh, manga, Jaden. I, I Jade. agree. There are some very but, but complex in, things. But in One Piece, like... Just pick anything out of the Wano arc, and there's like so many details and stuff mm. in the background. You're like, oh my gosh! And JoJo's like, I'm really coming around on the art style, and as we'll see, like, I'm really positive on these chapters. That's that's good. Besides for like um, some stuff we'll get into, I think I I really enjoy this. Like, I genuinely had fun reading these. Awesome. So we'll get into it, and um, you know, but yeah, you're, you're warming up like I did to Nisa Koi, you know. Exactly. Uh, I still. But we'll get into that as it goes on. <laughs> right. We, like I said, this is seven chapters, but we're going to be here for a while. <laughs> so, without any further ado, Jaden, I say we get started with um, number twenty-four. All right. But before that, um, let's. What happened last time? Okay, so last time, what uh, was the guy's name? Onta Konta. Oyakoma Va. They had just finished Oyama, killing Oyakoma him off, and they yes. finished off the Boom Boom family. Yes, and, and they, they were the, uh, heading for the zombie horse. Yeah, they were looking for this zombie horse, which is supposed to heal their wounds, basically. Yeah. All right. Volume 24. So, starting out with uh, chapter 24, we find out the text literally says, Our main character, Gyro, which I thought was a funny inclusion, because, you know, it is very focused on Gyro throughout the beginning. But I think it shifts more to Johnny later on. And we learn he's from Naples, which is this kingdom near Italy, and they basically protect the Vatican, is that right? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I okay. And so we get some more info on Gyro's background, and we learn a lot about his father. His father is a very private man. He doesn't do or go anywhere. All he does is he fills his purpose, and he teaches Gyro not to have any sentimentality towards people, and to just do his job without letting emotions get in the way. And we uh, we see that uh, Gyro is doing an execution, but he hesitates to throw, like it cuts later, and he hesitates to throw his balls at this woman. <laughs> And his dad gets his dad gets very mad at him, and it's just trying to it's trying to show that Gyro has a lot of compassion, but yeah, his father and, doesn't want him to. Yeah, and his father's very much this sentiment that you have will end up ruining the family name, and it's this entire thing of um, Gyro's dad being saying to Gyro like, "Hey, get rid of this sentiment so you can actually do your damn job." Mm -hmm. And the woman that they were trying to constrain actually tore off like Gyro's royal bib thing. That's very important to his his. Uh, culture or whatnot so was this woman only to coin of awe or whatever no it wasn't it, it was wasn't. just some random just from random prisoner yeah just a random prisoner uh and we find the child that gyro had sympathy for earlier he actually was able to fix the bib for gyro and uh, sew that together with a like a needle made from a bone and yeah he got punished for it yeah because i think it just opens up and all these prison guards are just yelling at and what's his name marco uh, yeah, it's Marco. Yeah, and these all these guys are yelling at Marco like, Hey, why do you have this bone? What are you not? They don't know it's a bone. They're thinking it's a pin. And they're like, why are you trying to murder us? Tap our eyes out. Mm. And the kid's just like, well, I found this on the ground. And I've been told my entire life I do good. I'll be doing it. So yeah. it, it was very interesting. And of course, here we see that Gyro has sentiment for this kid. Mm. And he's very pissed off about it in a way. Yeah, because right? I mean, he, he feels bad. I mean, the kid went out of his way to fix it despite knowing. I mean, he's going to die. Eventually. Because, oh, yeah. You know. uh, it, it's just a, it's a very interesting thing. I, I sort of understand why Jairus being such a dick to him. Like, don't ever speak to me again. Right? It makes sense being how he has to act. Yeah. And also, my one problem with this is, I understand we had to get that gyro backstory before. Mm -hmm. Then we had to finish up for Unicorn of Vada Show terrorist stuff. And then we come back to this. But it just feels a little misplaced to me. Yeah, I, I agree. They could they could have probably dedicated an entire chapter just to Jairus' backstory. Yeah, and not, like, done it in bits and pieces of chapters. Mm. Like, um, actually, earlier today, I had to record the 
um, 10th episode of Bleach Does Your Bottle Review, and like I talked about in there, the plots where the manga has been really disorganized, the anime has really fixed. Mm -hmm. And not that I don't think this is as egregious as some of Bleach moments yeah. are, right? I just feel like it could have been ordered in a different way. Yeah. Uh and like, I would understand if it's like, all right, we got this, then like five or ten chapters later, we mm -hmm. get more once more stuff gets revealed. But this is like, all right, we get a portion of a chapter here, all right, fight, portion of a chapter, fight. Yeah. Here's the rest of it. I I know that the JoJo's anime does a lot of rearranging. Does it? In part four, there was an entire arc, like three arcs, they completely switched around to make the sequence sing better for part four. Really? Yeah. It was, it, if you if you watch the anime, you don't notice it. If you read the manga, you don't really notice it unless you've noticed them very closely. Huh. That's interesting. But um, we find that uh, cuts back and we have the zombie horse. I really like how the zombie horse is depicted. The zombie horse is very strange. I think it's very interesting. It's like this mural yeah. up on this wall, but it's also this string that, like, it's Gyro goes under, and, like, he seems to have done stuff with it before, mm -hmm. where he just, like, pucks it off and, like, ties his leg with yeah. it in, like, a very gory fashion. Apparently, it heals him. So, it's, like, it's kind of, like, <laughs> magical stitching, basically. Yeah. And uh, we get a letter from the king of Naples, and it's a, it's a gift from him. But it's not exactly a standability. Gyro can tell it's not a standability. It's it's un because it seems to be like there are standabilities and abilities. Yeah. Right. Like from what it seems in um, a breakdown of like characters later, it seems like um, what we'll find out Johnny's nail spinning, his tusk, mm -hmm. as we'll find later, is his um, stand, and um, like Gyro's steel balls are his ability. Pretty much. Yeah. Same with um, how. Mr. Robinson, the bug breeder, yes. he had an ability in his eye while Omakomava had, had a stand with the pins. Yes, exactly. And I, this is one spot where the bolding text does help out. Yeah. It's like, oh no, his ability or his stand ability, mm -hmm. it does help differentiate because if it didn't, this would be a whole hell of a lot more confusing. Yeah. Be but but again, the, the bowl of random text is really ridiculous at times. It is, and it's not like in One Piece where, okay, you've of course got your devil fr fruits, and in hockey is a separate power in itself, but they work together, right? Mm -hmm. Here, it's just like random ass ability and another random ass ability, but they're somehow different, right? Yeah. It's very interesting to me. But I, I just love how the zombie horse is depicted. Very interesting. Okay. So then we get a cut to Joseph from the Bible in chapter 25. Oh, yes. Okay. Let me just say, this is wild. Yeah. And apparently, like, uh, Joseph, who was with Jesus and whatnot, made a map. But nobody really knows what this map was or where, where in the world it was meant to be. And it's been stolen and passed around between churches over thousands of years. Yeah, and this is some very um, deep rooted in Christianity stuff, mm. right? Um, just who is this person's whatever, as we'll find out body and what's going on with it. And it's a very bunch of like stuff. I wish I would have had the time to fact check some of this stuff. Yeah. Uh, do you know if there's like been people who go around and fact check this like this is completely bullshit wrong or stuff like that? JoJo's known to do that. It can sometimes do do BS stuff, but a lot of it is rooted in actual uh, history. It, it's historical fiction, of course. Yes. But I was just wondering if this is like a true history or just like it works. It's in the lines enough uh, to be bored correctly. Yeah, that's kind of how it works. Okay. I mean, for instance, the, the president is completely changed in this universe. But we'll yeah, get to that. Yeah. So, uh, it then comes back to modern day again. All these cuts back and forth. There's quite a lot of them. Yeah, but I, I think, like, here it's fine. I yeah. mean, it starting off a chapter with this backstory mm. that will become relevant here in a few minutes is very impactful. I think it works for what it needs yeah. to do. So, we get our next villain of the week, who is Stroheim, a German racer. And this is actually a part two reference, because there's a guy named Stroheim, and he makes a gun that basically comes out of his stomach and just shoots people. What's the musical reference here? I'm not sure, actually. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's just a German guy. Just a German guy. He dude. was actually a um, German soldier during the 1940s, if you catch my drift, in part two. <laughs> but anyways. Ah. Um, yeah, just one thing here. I, we're, I know we're talking about cuts again, but I just really like how this works. It's like, oh, talking about this... What was I saying? 
So going back to this point of cuts again, right? This stuff of all of this corpse stuff and this map, right? And then it just going into um, Strontheim and John facing Johnny Gyro. I just really like how it's cut. Mm. We don't need to know how he got there. We just know that he is now there yeah. and it's going on. Yep. I, I do like that style of cutting in a way. Yeah. And I also like his hair. His hair is pretty cool. Oh yeah, it's <laughs> ridiculous. But um, what happens is as he's shooting at Gyro, Gyro actually falls off his horse, which happens quite a lot in the series, it seems. And Gyro uses his steel balls to then harden his skin to deflect the next bullets that come at him. So they literally ricochet off of his skin, which is an one of the main abilities that Spin can have. It can, it can harden things in a way. I wonder if he uses that for other things. <laughs> oh my gosh. Jade. So then he gets oh. thrown against the crater. It's a mountain. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to question what Johnny and Jairo are doing out in the desert, all right? But anyway. Oh, uh, okay. So who gets thrown against the mountain? <laughs> Jairo gets thrown against like a mountainside. And he's able to start, he takes one of another one of his balls and spins it. He starts making these little craters, which is like how we saw it in the very first chapter. Yeah, what Sandman found, mm -hmm. right? And so basically he makes these craters and he just makes like these golf ball sized rocks and just starts pummeling Stroheim with them. He's out of here. Yeah, Stroheim gets dead really fast. Yeah. Wasn't it mentioned that Stroheim was like the in seventh place or something like that? He was in somewhere, the first stage? somewhere around there, yeah. So, uh, after that, we see that, uh... Can you take a look at your notes there? Yeah, I'm taking a the look. They, uh... uh like, you don't understand, like, chapter 24, he's got about four lines written. 25, I don't know how much he has written, 20, but it's too much. 25 is huge. 25 is a massive chapter, yes. like, oh my gosh. Okay, so after that, uh, they think, Johnny and Gyro think they're targeting me because I stand for something. I have a belief and I'm fighting for something. So it's, he's kind of like targeting Martin Luther King, you know? Yeah. They don't like what he believes in or what he's standing yeah, for. Yeah, there's these terrorists yeah. coming after him. And so as uh, they're going along, they passed him, something falls out of Johnny's hand. Just kind of randomly. The and Gyro this, doesn't see any of this. Yeah. It's this randomly shriveled up looking corpse part basically yeah and it's just like a full and like johnny's hand just it's like slit in half yeah and this part just falls out of it yeah it's just like weird hand shit mm. and there is a hole right in the middle of it so just thought that would be an interesting detail oh yeah i get it now yeah so johnny tells himself that the nails is his ability and the hand inside him is giving it to him yeah his um his spinning nails yeah not another type of nail that a hand has dealt with in the past. Yeah, and uh, it's mentioned by, I'm pretty sure, uh, St yeah, Stephen Steele. Steven, it's yeah, Stephen we Steele cut, yeah, we cut to the train now. Yeah, and he talks about how people are, people. a lot of people in the race are dying going through these places called Devil's Palms. Yeah. And that it's just a very dangerous area. Of course, we know what the Devil's Palm is. It's yes. a place to give stand abilities. And it chooses the people that it wants to survive. And this is very similar to part four, Jojo, where there's things called stand arrows. If you pierce yourself with this arrow, you either A, get a stand, or B, you die. And I sort of find this interesting because going back to the Mountain Tim stuff before, uh, Mountain Tim was the only one who survived. Mm -hmm. So I guess the Devil's Palm wanted him to survive. Chose, chose him to get a stand, yes. Chose him and all of the rest of his uh, hunting party to die. Yeah, so that's, so that's a very common theme, and it calls back to older Jojo parts. And we cut to a very fat guy talking about how Gyro has the corpse because because Steven Steele is talking about some kind of corpse that's on the the the, the map. map and this map is of course the map of the United States yes. very clear ones and we also see that this the steel ball run race is going through all of the points on this yes. map so and so there's a there's definitely an ulterior motive here there's and and the um there's this attendant with um Steven Steele mm. here. And um, the attendant doesn't know any of this, right? Yeah. And as Steven Steele talks about this, this fat man yes. starts talking about it with him. And this attendant here is just like, what's going on? I don't mm. understand. Is the attendant Lucy Steele his wife? No. That outcome up here in a second. Okay. It's just some random attendant. It's just some random dude. Okay, I didn't remember. And so this man says that it is justice to get the corpse. Like, it is the right thing to do. 
And of course, we don't really understand anything about this corpse. It's just that, yeah. oh, hey, here's a corpse. And he also says that the corpse chooses the user. So it's selective. Sort of like the devil's palm in yes. a way. And it's selective of the stand users that go through the devil's palm. Yeah. Sort of, and but Steven, not quite. Steven Steele's talking about how this is very dangerous and reckless. And the man says, don't you know I'm the one sponsoring you? This only can happen because of me. And we find out it is the President of the United States, Funny Valentine. His name's Funny Valentine? Yep, after the song, My Funny Valentine. Huh. You know, the cool thing is, in Japanese, you can basically name your characters whatever English garbage you want. But then in America, like in English, English speakers, we gotta deal with hot pants and funny Valentine. It's just random crap. Because, you know, they ain't gonna be able to tell the difference. <laughs> no, it's just like, oh, is that a normal name? <laughs> <laughs> and so this attendant who's listening comes over and accidentally spills coffee on the president. No, no, this is when Lucy still walks Lucy in. Lucy okay. Um, she walks into the room, she hasn't heard any of this, and she comes in and spills. Um, spills this, um, I guess, coffee yeah, or okay, something. Okay, so it was Lucy who did that. Okay. Yeah, Lucy, but the attendant before was not. It was yeah. just some dude. And this dude's still standing here as Lucy comes into the room and accidentally spills coffee on Mr. President. Yep. And uh, what happens is it's revealed that the coffee that was spilled didn't. It somehow got removed in a way. And Really? Yeah. I did not know any of this. Yeah, like the basically not, not a drop got on him. And somebody was able to uh, manipulate it in a way. And uh, Valentine tells Ste uh, Stephen Steele how there are people after Johnny and Gyro. And it alludes to like a shadow on top of the train. And so, we also see this guy in with this weird hat and like this hook sort of looking thing running by the train in the shadows, yeah. right? And at this point, we cut back to Johnny and Gyro, right? Yep. And they're just having this random conversation. Yeah, about, like, these goggles and spinal girls, yeah. that thing. This is a really good moment that I think we needed for these two characters. Mm. We'll talk about the train stuff later, never yeah. comes relevant again. Johnny and Gyro here just having fun talking. This is what I've sort of been waiting for. See, like, this is a moment that I'm like, all right, I understand these characters. I'm really warmed up to Gyro mm. because of, like, this conversation. See, that that's the thing. I think that the Gyro Johnny relationship is the best part about Steel Ball Run, and they do get a lot more ridiculous, random conversations later on. And that's like the thing about like going back to One Piece, like we talked about earlier. In that series, like there hasn't been a true moment where the Straw Hats have just hung out for a chat, mm -hmm. right? It's battle this, battle that, everybody split up. Yeah. Luffy doing this, fighting enemies, and it's just like something it needs for not quite world building, but just for the sake of a story. Yeah. You need character relationships that are good, and Johnny and Gyro starting like this, it's really great, and it's warming me up to these characters in an amazing way. And you also, you've got to have breaks between action. You've got to have periods where, that make the that make the action more valuable. And then Gyro disappears. Yeah, <laughs> Gyro just is gone. There's feathers, like, kind of floating in the air like a bird shot or something. And then his horse disappears. And then all of his stuff disappears. Yeah. And Johnny's horse disappears. And Johnny starts shooting something, but nothing nothing comes out of it. Yeah. And he realizes that there's an enemy from the sky. It has to be attacking from above. And that's where chapter 25 ends. Oh my gosh, this that, chapter was long. That chapter was torture to take notes on. Oh my gosh. <laughs> because yeah. it so much happened. I mean yeah. it went from a it went from a backstory to a random fight to talking about the devil's palm to steal and uh, one of the main characters, Funny Valentine, being revealed to another fight. Yeah, oh, it's a chapter. Oh my god, it's 50 pages. It's so much, but it's really dense, but it's really good, I have to say. It's a lot of backstory, and it's a lot of things we need to clarify what will be happening mm -hmm. next. Because, you know, if nothing else, JoJo's is dense. It gets to the point. There's a lot of story in what you read. <laughs> Just read Hunter Hunter and read <laughs> Exam. Oh my god. Read the most current arc of that stuff. Oh my gosh. So 26 is 26. next, right? Johnny's horse is now gone as well. And they're just kind of being ripped out of the sky by these hook-looking things. And these hooks are coming out of these feathers. They're coming out of these feathers, and they they just take things. And so what happens is Johnny takes his spin and spins up dust around him to block... Uh, these the, feathers from seeing him yeah. and grabbing him. And there's also this, like, rock 
cliff. Yeah, he needs to hide he, under a rock. That he has to hide under so these things can't pierce him since they are coming from the sky. Yeah. It's not like they can come down and droop around. They, it's sort of like a fishing rod. It has mm -hmm. to hook you straight. And so he can tell that the enemy is searching for his arm. It's searching for something. It's Yeah, and he sort of realizes that it's this part of the arm. Yeah. Like, it shows that, like, Johnny's really smart. Yeah, Johnny is very intelligent. To figure all this out. Yeah. And it it cuts to the the person behind these axes. And it's this very strange dude with, like, a bamboo wrapped around his head. He just makes random noises. Yeah, and... Like, and random machine This noises. guy is called Pork Pie Hat Kid. Pork Pie Hat Kid, yeah. Why? <laughs> because, because they can. And he has, like, a really strange spool in his mouth. Uh, yeah, and he's got these spools, which he lets these hooks come out from. And he's got this, like, tray of water in front of him mm. with the feathers in the tray. Yeah. And then these hooks go through the tray. Yes. So to me, it sort of seems like this water is, like, the skyline. Mm. And he can see stuff through this. He can send his hooks through. Yeah, that's how the ability works. And his ability, his stand is called Wired. Yep. Correct? I'm pretty sure that's a album from ACDC pretty sure and does the pork pie hat kid not have a band reference it's just no that's a that's, a that's a reference as well it it's is a song yeah huh interesting I, or i think it's a singer i don't know music so i don't know any of this and so i put on my notes op character and then i realized oh yeah one piece because he looks like a one piece character he has the same strange design philosophy as a one piece villain ah uh, yes and no i can sort of see what you're saying he doesn't have enough um unnecessary swaths of clothes around him okay. that he can then yeah I mean it's a really just interesting design overall and to be honest I don't hate the design mm. I think it looks like pretty fine overall yeah if anything Jojo can make some memorable villains because they're just strange like Oya Koma Va you're not going to forget that weirdo no I practically <laughs> have I think that design's stupid <laughs> but like Pork Pie Hat Kid looks pretty cool and so we see that he has Gyro tied up by his hair in a very strange way. Yeah. I just thought that was interesting. And uh, Gyro's uh, Pork Pie Hat Kid's actually able to lure in Johnny with a beetle, basically, by getting a, like beetles to crawl under there and hook him. Yeah, because it's shown that he can pretty much make hooks out of anything, sort of like how Omiko Mava could um, make use pins to affect everything, right? Yeah. So Johnny pretty much after this... Um, starts wiggling his hands mm. and like this fairy comes this out of his this hands this pink almost. looking little like baby thing yeah. yeah um it's really weird looking yep and that is that is the manifestation of his stand ability so we're finally seeing how it looks okay so that is his stand so every Arps. stand user has a like physical look of it like there's a person behind it kind of okay because I always thought that the stands more look like robots in a way. They like, some do, some look more humanoid. They can literally be any design they want. Because what I originally thought from this was this was the hand mm. of this corpse part. I thought it was that. Yeah, but it's, it's not. It's the manifestation of his hand. So that is the or manifestation of, of, of his tusk ability. Yeah, yeah, that he names tusk, which is the ability to fling off his nails. Yep. And some writing starts being etched into his arm. Now it's like Mur de Cruz or something, per, right? Per, uh, forgive my Latin, but it says Cruz Muvere, whatever that means. Oh, Cruz Muvere. And it basically means to be able to get up and move. Yeah, it's move your legs, pretty much. Yeah. And Johnny is actually able to shoot with his feet as his boots rip off. Yeah, yeah. And, and this, and nice I, I guess this um, tusk. Yeah. What would you call it? It's tusk. Yeah. Um, I'm, yeah, I was, I was called this fairy tusk. Tusk goes down, like touches Johnny's feet, and his legs move as he shoots tusks from his feet. Yeah, and as he shoots the beetle, the nails then come out of the pan in front of Port Pie Hat Kid and hits him. Yeah, because they go through. Because, yeah, pretty much the feathers were the means of transportation for him. Mm -hmm. So whenever they go back through these feathers, they come back and hit Port Pie yeah, Hat so Kid. So his ability is essentially like a strange kind of portal. In a way. And he just is able to use that with this these wires and hooks he has mm. in his mouth. And uh, Tusk says, Chew me me, which is a very famous phrase that it says. We'll get to later, and that'll be that'll be important later. But just thought I'd point that out, because I realized it on my second read-through. 
And Johnny then realizes that this arm cannot just be the only thing they're after. There has to be a full body somewhere. Yeah, because Johnny's like, well, okay, they're obviously after this arm because they've got to be looking for something. I've got this weird arm. Um, but it looked like a corpse, and but there has to be more of a corpse. So they're finding the pieces of Exodia. <laughs> Put all five pieces of Exodia together to summon the ultimate beast! I've never watched Yu-Gi-Oh! or even seen a part that's, of That's all I know from Yu-Gi-Oh! Yeah, yeah. Exodia. Hey, Jade, talk about Pokemon, it's a V-Union card. Oh, sure, whatever. But, um, <laughs> Johnny also realizes there has to be something bigger behind this race. There's yeah. gotta be a reason that we're racing across here, and it's probably and, to find these parts. And he's pretty much figured out what Steven Steele and Mr. President were talking about before. Yeah. And then we see that G uh, Gyro, who's barely conscious, it tries to, what seems to throw a ball at Port by Hat Kid, and he's like, you loser, what are you trying to do? And starts beating him up, basically. But this ball goes further and hits the sand yeah. near where Johnny is, mm. pretty much telling Johnny which way Gyro is, yes. and in turn, what way the enemy is. And that was that was the point of his uh, toss. He wasn't trying to hit him, yeah. he was trying to lure Johnny. So going into 27, uh, we have an opening shot that shows Port by Kit, Port, Port by Hat Kit has a stand wired. It shows Johnny's ability. Johnny's tusk, stand, stand yeah. tusk. And it and says that Gyro, his abilities are still balls number one and two, but it does not mention a stand. Yeah. And so, um, Port by Hat Kid loses track of Johnny by being distracted with Gyro. Yeah. And Johnny gets sand all over himself. I'm pretty sure he spins the sand up onto him, which is how he's able to get it all over his body and still keep moving forward. And pretty much just to make this really fast, yeah. Johnny just tries to go through the sand. Um, pork by hat kid looks for him. He can't see him. He puts back down Johnny's horse yes. so that Johnny's horse will come towards him. Which, is, to, which I think was very smart. To find him. Yeah, because the horses will return to their master, mm -hmm. and we'll see this later. And at this point, um, Gyro gets up, Johnny, and they end up being pork by hat kid with this tusk, right? Yeah, well, the way they're able to do it is so... Port by Hat Kid pours gasoline through and then lights it on fire. And so he thinks that Johnny will get up and start moving around. And he finds what looks to be Johnny on fire and goes to attack him. But it was actually a piece of wood that Johnny carved out with his nails. And he's like, this ability is greater than anything I could have thought it would be. And I will call this Tusk. Huh. I totally missed all of that. Wow. The, the wood thing. Yeah. That's very interesting. You gotta read it in color, man. And so... He's able to shoot at Pork Pie Hat Kid, and... Jaden, you know the old thing versus sub versus dub? Yeah. It's just colored versus non-colored. Yeah. Colored's the original. If you don't watch colored, or you don't read colored, you're not respecting the original creation of it. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Colored's bad. It's like a dub. Dubs suck. I actually very much prefer dubs over subs. Yeah. And so, Gyro is left alive, so Johnny goes up to him, and Pork Pie Hat Kid starts pulling him through Gyro. He's using Gyro as yeah. his medium through the portal. Yep. And, uh, Pork Pie Hat Kid says, give me the arm and you will live. And Gyro sort of hears about this, what arm, and all that sort of thing. Yeah, so he lets go of the arm, and, uh, Johnny actually loses his ability. Yeah, because he loses the arm, and he no longer has this tusk. Yeah. ability he can't do it himself mm. but the hand can still do it yeah and, and the uh, hand is still doing it as it flies down to pork by hat yeah. kid and it just rips pork by hat kid to shreds yeah gyro gyro spun the nails before they gave it to him so he would do that yeah because gyro is able to spin the nails mm. on the corpse part but then pork by hat kid grabs a corpse part and like wraps it real quick yeah. before he dies mm. and so uh johnny and gyro talk about finding the corpse and Johnny's determined to find all the parts. And Gyro's like, hey, I'm not going to do this for you. I'm only here for the pardon. But it seems like everybody's hiding one thing from everybody mm. else. And Johnny makes this note of, hey, I think Gyro's the only one I can truly trust. Mm. And he's like, we're still in the race, so let's get on going. And he gets fired up to keep rolling. Yeah. Um, so this is the end of this pork by Hackett fight. And this is also the end of the volume. Yeah, end of volume. Um, volume 5, that is. Mm. I really think this is good. I really like how the inscription goes on Johnny's mm. arm, and of course we'll get in that here in a second. But I really like this fight. All right. It starts to show ingenuity in the characters, and it starts to show Gyro and Johnny in a way that we haven't seen before. Mm. And I'm very high on these chapters, the whole entire backstory and everything, and then to, to the Tusk parts. 
very good. I don't have many complaints. Yeah, I think that Johnny earning his stand in a way is really cool to see. Like, he worked to get that ability. Yeah, and I mean, this hand comes out of fucking nowhere. <laughs> like, fucking nowhere. And, like, I will admit, I have read up to pretty much what we've read here before, mm. before, just uh, before reading. Um, but going back, as we're reading this for a second time in a way, it sort of makes a whole lot more sense how it was done, and I have very much respect for what has happened. Yeah. But so, now, with chapter t- um, 28, we're to get on to the part that I haven't read. All right, it's time, so, to, time to jump the shark, man. Oh, boy. All right, so we start off with the best cover in the series. I think, it, it, does it show the covers when yeah, you're reading? Yes, it, okay. it's um, a bunch of steel balls and then Gyro and Johnny. You're running across them. I think it's pretty cool. But isn't this, because you have the entire series in Japanese, and you've mm. got two really faded volumes. Isn't this sixth one of them? No, I don't think it is. It's oh. one of my good ones. Oh, okay. That's good. One of my really faded ones is like volume 17, which is another one of my favorite covers. But we'll get to that. We'll, yeah. we'll, we'll get to that eventually. Yeah, we still got a little while. So the next corpse part they deduce is on the mountain. Well, okay. Well, we got a little thing too. I like the whole thing of it's been 18 days. Right, oh, really? showing that it's been time. Okay, yeah, like a bunch of time has passed here, right? And this newspaper flies onto Johnny's arm, yeah. and as Johnny sees this, um, he's like, "Oh, that mountain sort of looks the same as the cure part on my arm. Mm. Oh no, it looks the same. Maybe these aren't words telling us location, but showing us the location. Yeah, so it's a, a very, picture, very roundabout right? way. And I also like how at this point Johnny speeds up enough." Because we see that Sandman and Dio are running in the race, right? Mm. So Gyro and Johnny get behind them, and the rankings are upcoming as Dio is first, Johnny second, Sandman third, and jo- Gyro. Yep. Gyro's fourth. I just love how Gyro is so pissed at. God damn it, Johnny! You had one rule. Yeah, Gy- Gyro was pissed, and we'll get to that in a second. Yeah. So the third stage is the Rocky Mountains. They're passing through the Rocky Mountains, and so this will be a pretty difficult race. This will, this will eliminate a lot of people. It's an uphill race. Yeah. Right. Literally. <laughs> then we cut again back to Valentine and Steven Steele. And Valentine shotguns a beer. Yeah, he just does it. Which is a reference to part three. Oh. Where Jotaro <laughs> shotguns a beer. Is it? He, huh. just, he just randomly shotguns a beer. Which I think is, you know, very, very American. <laughs> and, uh... Uh, all right. When was Prohibition going on? Was Prohibition outlawed by this point? It, it, I think it was later, yeah. Because this is 1890. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, basically, Stephen Steele talks to Valentine, and Valentine, like, wraps it in cloth, basically says that Pork Pie Hatkin was able to read the R- R- Yeah. Pretty much, he shows this with the beer can. Pork Pie Hat Kid wrapped the arm, um, uh, this corpse part, mm-hmm. that had the inscriptions on it. So, they have the inscriptions, but we see that, um, then we see pretty much, um, oh, what's his name? Valentine? Valentine, yeah. Valentine does the same thing with this beer can showing, okay, this is how it worked. Yeah. And it then gets revealed that Valentine has the heart of the corpse, which is crazy. And on his chest, there's a bunch of there's weird, a lot of runic writing, writing yeah. right? <laughs> and who else to see this than the most innocent character here, Lucy Steele? Yeah, she sees this through the sort of thing, and um, Valentine comes to go through and see who it was, but he doesn't see anybody. Yep. But we see that Lucy actually saw this going on, right? And so we, we cut back to the race, and Gyro is just pissed at Johnny. Yeah, because those two are arguing at each other. Because of the point system, it's going to be nearly impossible for Gyro to catch up to Diego or Sandman. In this part of the race. Yeah. And they see Diego fall over, and Gyro just gives one of the best shit-eating grins I've seen. He's like, hey, let's go let's go see if he's all right, Johnny. We'll see what's going on. No and, and Johnny's, like, really against this. Yeah. He's like, no. We are not doing that. I don't care. Johnny hates Dio, and it isn't explained for a while as to why that is. We'll get a reason later. But he he does hate um, he does hate Diego. Because <laughs> I just saw it as a cautionist move. That's yeah. how I've seen it. And we see Diego starts growing these strange nails. They look very animalistic. Yeah, yeah, and, and we see that, like, Dio's skin is sort of falling apart in a way as he's on the ground here. Gyro goes over to, like, to taunt him, and Johnny's like, dude, we gotta get the fuck on the move, right? Yep. And he then falls back down and basically lays unconscious, and it pans out to show him sleeping around a dinosaur skeleton, a, a uh, fossil, basically. Yeah. And when they get back up, they realize they gotta stay in this village for the night. Yeah, it's too, be- it's too dangerous out. Too dangerous to go out, and at this point, D- 
Dio catches up to them yeah. and starts talking with him, makes a snake pun. Mm, yeah. Right. Just random, random crap. Yeah, yeah. And, but it's very much drawn out on the. Yeah. Right? Uh, showing that, like, Dio's got something going on here. Mm. As, like, Dio starts acting really erratic in a way. And every panel you see, he gets worse and worse. And then, as they're, as they're going to bed, Johnny walks out and sees Diego starting to eat rocks. Oh, yeah, yeah, because now they are back. They have checked into this town, found an inn, and they're doing their stuff there, right? Jairo now to go get firewood. Johnny's inside doing his thing, and he's making coffee, and he outside, um, Diego's there eating these rocks. And Johnny drops the famous line, what a queer. It's just, it's a very famous line. And, and yeah, and he pretty much does all this, and... Pretty much what ends up happening is Dio comes in and is just acting really erratic. He, mm. It's almost like he can't see anything. He can yeah. only smell. Yeah. His S's are getting even worse, mm. right? It seems like his skin's falling off in a way. And, and the reason he ate these rocks were they're, they're gastroliths, which help with digestion and whatnot. It's the same thing that, like, birds do, yep. right? They grind down their food in that way. So Johnny, uh, Gyro comes back, and they see, like, a disgusting corpse sitting outside yeah and there's a bunch of flies flying around and there's this bear corpse outside right and jared's like johnny what the fuck when did that happen did you see this right and um he's like well well, diego was just here i don't know what's going on as we see diego (laughs) turn around as a motherfucking dinosaur like johnny and jared turn around and the first thing they see is a straight dinosaur and, and like, Dio grabs his coffee as he becomes a dinosaur. And it's just like, oh, my gosh. Yeah. As um, Gyro and Johnny leap outside, or Johnny mm-hmm. gets outside somehow, as there's this dinosaur Dio going into Chapter 29. Yeah, so, end of Chapter 29, Diego hits Gyro. Johnny starts shooting. Balls are flying. Diego's very fast. I mean, it's just sporadic action. It's kind of hard to uh, explain it. And, um, so, the uh, steel ball... Uh, well, at this point, this bear who got murdered wakes up, and it is a dinosaur, too, right? Yes. Like, it shows that, like, Dio can create dinosaurs out of these everybody around him, mm. right? And there's a bunch of action where, like, Gyro throws the steel ball at the dinosaur, and as it comes back, Johnny realizes that, oh, no, the steel ball is luring him here. Yeah, because, because real quick... Johnny and Gyro just say, stop, stop moving. And if they stop moving, uh, Diego won't see him, and he runs past him. Yeah. But he's, but Diego's smart enough to know that the returning the balls always return back to Gyro, so he's able to use that against him. To and as his ball's coming back towards Gyro, Gyro, like, flattens out his legs. Yeah. The, or the steel ball does it. What I assume happens is that as the ball comes by, Gyro kind of uses the spin in his body to flatten him out. Okay. So, yeah, and the spin flattens him out as it just gets more of a move on, and it goes past him. Mm. And it hits the wall, Dino Dio goes over there, and then Gyro makes a note of, okay, I can flatten me and Johnny, and we can go through (laughs) these sewer lines. And it's just like, he can almost flatten him like paper. It just reminds me of like Paper Mario in a way. And they need to get to the Big Dipper to find... Uh, well, okay, because well, Gyro's out here and he sees the Big Dipper, right? Mm-hmm. And um, on Johnny's arm, there's a Mouvre Corvus mm-hmm. or whatever, right? And the Mouvre or whatever is looks like the Big Dipper. Yeah. And this other mountain that's shaped like the Curus is around it. So Gyro sees this and he sees it and he's like, okay, it's got to be on that peak right there. The corpse part is on that peak. Yeah. So now let's move into uh, chapter 30. Are we, we get- a chap? No, we're not on chapter 30 yet. Um, they're- Oh, there's more? Dino um, Dio is pretty much on the outside. They're going through the sewers, and a bunch of mini dinosaurs come in and start to terrorize okay. them. Um, Johnny pretty much notices what's going on, and Gyro does too, um, as Gyro starts to become a dinosaur, right? We see that he's been infected with Where- this way. That-, that is chapter 30. No, that gets revealed at the end of chapter 29. Okay. And at this point, we go into chapter 30, which is Dio backstory. Okay, so- Dio's backstory. So to sum it up real quick, Dio was abandoned as a child, and some woman and this man saw him, and the woman went to go save him. Well, no, it. they were his parents. Pretty much Dio was abandoned by his parents, dumped in a hole, and um, apparently his parents didn't have enough funds to care for him at the time, right? And would have a child later whenever they could, Yeah. right? Um, pretty much rain happened. Dio got washed out of this hole he was buried in. 
um, his mother and father are walking down and they see their child running down. And the mom's sort of like, oh no, Diego, Diego, I love you so much, and goes to save him. Yeah, okay. And the pretty much husband says, oh no, I don't want you anymore, and just leaves them to be mm -hmm. as they faint on the ground. So basically, they spend their, he spends his entire life growing up like a, nearly a slave on this farm. Yeah, because a farmer comes and finds him. Mm -hmm. And the owner tries to uh, rape the mother, but she refuses. And, and so he decides to ruin their lives. Yeah, it ruined their lives. He um, pretty much they get um, like a slosh every morning, mm. and they got to put it in cups to eat. Yeah. Well, he melted out the bottom of their cups so they can no longer eat. So. And so, uh, Diego says to use their shoes, and his mother gets angry and said uses her hands and basically de like destroys and burns. Burns her, her hands so that Diego can live. But she tells she tells Diego to have dignity, and you know, because like using your shoes as a bowl is not the most you know, upstanding thing. And he was also going to use like a, um, a animal slosh bucket yes. too, so. And so his mother eventually does die from the burns on her hands, from a uh, disease. About a year, it was what, tinnitus? Yeah. So. And Dio wants revenge. He wants to get back on the people who wronged him. And we see that like Dio's grown up, grown up and of course he grew up around horses, mm -hmm. so he knew this. And we, he's from England and he knows that this steel ball run race is part of England, and he's like, okay, they will pardon, or they will give me help in a way. Yeah. It's like how Johnny's going, or Driver's going after a pardon. Dio is sort of going after a favor. Yeah, he's a going, political he's, favor. He's going after fame and power, yes. Yeah. So he can track down this man mm -hmm. and wrong his rights. So, uh, right is wrong? Right is wrong. Yeah. <laughs> wrong is right. Wrong is right. So, another uh, thing I noticed was Johnny says, go, Johnny, go which is a reference to the song Johnny was uh, named after, Johnny D. Good. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, but that's back in the present after we get all of this um, yes. Dio backstory stuff. We go back to present where Johnny and Gyro are here at the end of this pipe and there's a bunch of dinosaurs running up the side. And get pissed on. Yeah, and they get pissed <laughs> on to um, track the dinosaurs towards them. Yeah. And of course, Gyro's like, uh, he's turning into dinosaurs. He's like, all right, Johnny, you've got to go. You've got to mm -hmm. find the corpse parts because that's what you're dream is yeah in pokemon that's your treasure yeah. treasure hunt well the reason they want the corpse parts is he notices johnny's arm does not decay into a dinosaur like the rest of him yes so if johnny gets the corpse part up there it can slow his effects down as well and prevent him from turning into a dinosaur of course yeah and uh these tiny dinosaurs that were flying through the sewers they kill him and reveal that they were mice so basically anything that he's able to touch or infect can become a dinosaur it's like omakoma vaz power yes and so they got to get to the mountain but there's this vast cliff that they yeah. can't get over. So what do they do? Jump. And I love this. Gyro uses his steel balls to take this tree, deform it, and shred it into ropes. He shaves it into a rope to fly on. So I that the two of them can get across, and then they break the rope so that Dio can't get across. That, it's so cool. That was pretty cool, yeah. It's awesome. And so as they're running across, the sand begins to react to Johnny in a way. As, yeah, and they're on this mountain as Registeel appears. Yeah. This thing looks like Registeel. It's just this random <coughs> stand protector kind of thing yeah, that and, protects the part. But you get what I'm saying. It yeah. looks like Reggie Seal. Yeah, I get what you're saying. And in it, it holds uh, both eyes. It, ho it holds these eyes of the corpse. Yes. Saying that these, technically, the second but third corpse part mm -hmm. is the eyes. Yeah. And to, to finish off this chapter, Diego, Diego runs by. And you know in Mario, when you can jump on Koopas to get really high? And he, he pretty he much, that. he throws these two dinosaurs over into this pit and Drew just bounces off them to get over there. Them, yes. And he goes and ends up stealing the eyes right out of Gyro and Johnny's hands. Yep, so he pulled the Yoshi sacrifice. Yeah, and pretty much Gyro's really turning into a dinosaur and it looks like they're in terrible condition as Dio gets these eyes mm -hmm. as he's still in his dinosaur storm perhaps, form. Perhaps Dire Straits. Another part one reference. Is and that goes, like literally what this is based off of? Well, no, or is no, no, that no. just like a joke? That was making? a joke because okay. there is a character in part one named Dyer and another one named Straits. Really? <laughs> yeah. So, okay. I have to say, I have loved this Dio stuff. Ever since I think this pork pie hat kid stuff, after like this first thing with the backstory, mm -hmm. um, the first chapter, and then going into like all of the um, corpse stuff, this map, and on here, I have enjoyed every single part of this. I cannot complain whatsoever. Yeah, I, I think that these uh, these chapters are really good, and this is when this is when the peak starts. I think, in my opinion, 
So, are you saying this year sort of peaks early and then sort of drops down in a little bit? I think I think it has a really strong start. The middle is really good, but the ending, the ending is probably when we get to it. If you don't give it a ten out of ten, I'll be disappointed. Because at this point, I think right now, um, if we're going to, because this series is about a hundred chapters, so we yeah. split up into fours. The first fourth was sort of all right. We're getting to a point, but starting here so far, like. To be honest, I would probably give these chapters an eight, eight and a half out of ten, okay. just because they've been really enjoyable. Whenever I was reading them, I was on the edge of my seat of, wow, Dio's acting really weird. What's going on here? What's this going to mean? Right? I don't really like the longer chapter format. It's just not really what I'm interested in reading. But it's really good, and I don't have a problem whatsoever with any of this. Yeah, I think that the 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 longer chapters are gonna translate well to anime because each anime is gonna be about or each ep anime episode, if it ever does get animated, is only gonna be maybe one to one and a half chapters each. Yeah. So basically, all they gotta do is just adapt a chapter and episode to make it around seventy-ish episodes. Which, but anyways, I'd give these a nine out of ten personally. And I mean, it is your favorite series. Oh, yeah. Before we end off, though, there was an extra chapter in the colored version. Yeah, I, I looked in mine. Jane told me about this. Um, I go straight from um, volume six here to um, volume seven. So I didn't really get this extra chapter. But yeah. tell me about Jane. So you say this is important. It gives us Valentine's background. And he was on an expedition somewhere to Mountain Tim and was the only survivor and came out with the heart. That's basically all you need to know. It then gives a ranking of all the people in the race. And it gives a recap of everybody's abilities. And something I noticed was Kanye is, I think, in 17th place. Kanye West. Just Kanye. Just Kanye. Yeah. Huh. So I thought that was an interesting detail. But yeah, uh, Valentine has most likely gone through a similar kind of devil's palm, which I think is a very interesting thing to drop in an extra chapter. Well, um, do you really have anything else to say, Jane? I said what I want to talk about this. Dinosaurs are cool. Pork by Hack Kid was cool. Yep. I think I think going into the next volumes, uh, we'll see some pretty cool stuff. Well, that's expected. But as for this volumes, these volumes, pretty awesome. Pretty awesome, yeah. That's what I got to so say. So next time, um, we'll be back with um, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Steel Ball Run volumes. What will that be? Seven and eight? Seven and eight, yep. And I don't know what chapters they cover, but it's probably going to be like three chapters, but it's going to be <laughs> in our like hour and a half episode. So without further ado, uh, what is this? This is Gold Plasma 231, out. See you guys.